Hey everyone, it's Jesper here, and I thought after last night's racing, it was time for another one of these race breakdowns, because it's been such a long time since I've done one here on the CVRK YouTube channel that it's warranted, and especially after racing on the mountain bike course last night, this was the fifth and final race of the CVR World Cup preseason race of last night. I was in this, Peter, Frank, Timothy, Nigel, Carl, Marty, Tim, Ryan, Homer, Kinjal, and etc. And this race, I'll take you through my perspective as it starts in four seconds and how really you shouldn't race CV Arcade. So, uh, come straight out of the gun. We're, Timothy and I are sprinting to give you some background context. It hasn't really been our night out on course. I had some technical difficulties and so did Tim and Timothy and we just are, uh, we're just so, so frustrated about our performance on the night that we wanted to win this one and in particular me, so you see me in second place moving up here as they cut to me. I had uh, taken the head I, all night I had my headphones off so I can communicate with Timothy and Tim. Uh, for this last race, I took my headphones on. As you can see by my face, I am quite heavily concentrating on this race because I want to win. Like, I came second on Hazardous Velo, and then the second, third, and fourth race were nothing to write home about. So this one, I went to my, my rock playlist. I put the, mu the, the music as loud as possible, put the headphones on, and uh, I'm doing my best Monica Do impression. When you look into my eyes, you can just see it's purely concentrated. But I should have done my homework. It's uh, 16 laps in total of this course, 13.5 uh, kilometers of racing, and the only real pressure point is this Castro corner where you've got to come down to 31 kilometers an hour. But what ended up happening is Timothy and I, for some reason, we thought we could break away. In this race, you don't quite see it with the animations not being on, but when you look at the riders nearby list, you'll see all the avatars are having this glowing sphere, like sphere around their names, around their avatars. That means they have the ability quantum shift on at all times. And what I didn't realize is that this group down here is actually seeing 90% draft, 85% draft at all times if they're sitting in, unlike Ryan right now. Meanwhile, Timothy and I up here the front here, we're seeing 40% draft when we're drafting. So that's 40% extra energy that we need to exert that we really shouldn't. And some of the, the main, oh, as, as Nigel makes a silly mistake there, but some of the power, like some of the power outputs in the drafts I saw when I got caught eventually was like 92% as Marty is calm and collected. Ryan is calm and collected. I think at this point on the night, Peter Castro was first overall. And all he had to do really was finish top five in this race to win on the night. But when you look at the power output, so look at the uh, the riders nearby list and watch the equalized wattage. The chasing group of Peter, Marty, Ryan, Frank are significantly lower as uh, my equalized heart rate is 197. I think... Ryan sent me an update after this race last night and was like, wow, Jesper, w wow, <laughs> just, 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 wow. And that's, that's part of the reason why I wanted to make this video as well, because how, how, like, look at that face. Look, I gritted teeth, my long hair drenched into my eyes. It was just determination to prove a point and to win this race. So according to the statistics, for the duration of this race, I averaged... 198 equalized heart rate. Of course, my, my equalized heart rate got blown out in this race. You'll see me hit 213, 214 equalized heart rate, but that gets updated. But nonetheless, I blew myself out in this course. So Timothy and I, I got home that night and Timothy's currently staying at our house as he's visiting the cycling home offices. And he was like, Jesper, I think if we had talked more, if we've communicated more, we could have stayed away there. We could have really worked well together. But... The main reason we were up there was that I just stuck with it. I, I put on the headphones. I did not want to chat. I just wanted to go for it. But Mati, yet to break a sweat, even though he's wearing the awesome CVR World Cup League shirt. You can see him breaking. Uh, yeah, 10 kilometers to go here. And I just hit 201 equalized heart rate. <laughs> Timothy's heart rate is obviously having some sort of malfunctioning here as it shows 95 equalized, that's not correct. But back in the chasing group, they're all equalized. I mean, Peter's raced enough, Frank's raced enough, Ryan, Marty, 170, 160. It tickles, but it doesn't hurt. It's nothing like 204. And at this point, we've gone so deep that there's no, like, we've got a gap of six seconds. That is nothing. This is not how you should race CVRK because... 
you've heard me commentate on the CVRK team leagues as Tim has uh, jumped off the bike and is now watching and trying to get by as he needs to get some water as he smiles and laughs. But you've heard me commentate the CVR team league events and the main thing I bang on about is homework, 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 do your preparation, do your planning, figure out the speeds, figure out how to attack the courses and we just didn't do it this week. I mean, if you had said to yourself, quantum shift on at all times, there's a group of four people that can literally be inside each other near the back here. They will have to go so much slower than you to go. Uh, they'll have to do so much less power to go the same speed as you. I mean, just, just simple homework can make the difference. Again, now, I really want to do a physical replay of this event because it was one of the more enjoyable events to ride. I'm not sure from a, a spectator's point of view that it was as exciting as it could possibly be because it is just a massive draft effect where the speeds are increasingly higher. I think these were some of the quickest lap times we've ever seen on the mountain bike course created by me because with the draft, with the speed, I mean, there was one time on the uphill, I'm not sure if the camera caught this, but after the finish line, I sprinted out of the gate. I used the uh, downhill to gain momentum, and I went so quick, I almost slid out on the uphill. Like, that does not happen on mountain bike course. Last week, we had uh, uh, wind on this course. That was quite fun, quite challenging. This week, it was quantum shift. I think I do prefer without quantum shift, because I, I, like, I like the risk of crashing. I like the risk of having to fight for your lane and when you come into the this this castro corner if you are on the inside you have to be wary of of you know bouncing out to the outside but the same thing is if you're on the outside you have to be wary of of starting too far out and going too quickly and crashing like i did on echelon so this by the way this was where i, I almost lit out so i came up with so much speed and my avatar guy moved two to the left now i'm still all over the place core stability is not a thing that's in my dictionary and you can see Timothy and I moving to the left, trying to give each other a draft. But with one second between us now, this is where Peter and Frank catches us, us on this straightaway. And I'm so happy this didn't get caught on camera because I was upset. I was like, I've literally just killed myself. I'm at 206 equalized heart rate. I have not gone this hard in Kate in forever. Yet the group behind me is catching me at 180. I'm like, oh, come on. And... Uh, but it was reasonable. It was very, very reasonable because quantum shift, drafting, it made sense. It's just when uh, so when you don't do your homework, when you don't do your preparation, you get to look like an idiot sometimes, which uh, I got to do yesterday. It was fun, though, to have that many Cycling Hub members in one office. We had Quinton, we had Timothy, we had Tim, we had I, and uh, we're all together, we're all riding or Tim, uh, Quinton wasn't because he crashed over the weekend, but we're all together talking about the racing. You can see Timothy smiling. It is funny how Timothy can travel across uh, cross borders, but yet he still can't set up his web camera to show his entire face. I do find that that <laughs> slightly ironic. But so we're down to eight kilometers to go here. Now we're getting caught. Now this is where we start to realize there's a lot of draft. There's 92% draft, and now for the next however many laps. It's just a name. It's a game of just staying in there, staying in there. Marty attempted to attack. I believe Timothy attempted to attack. I'm skipping a bit ahead here because now much doesn't happen on this course. Once you realize that you can be at this pace, you'll see we come up top here, 40 kilometers an hour. Then you got to react. You got to react. If you want to do a physical replay, the CVR preseason race 46E, this is a great race for you to get comfortable with the drafting and gameplay dynamics of Kate. if you don't want crashing to be a risk. It looks like uh, Marty has got a very different approach to everybody else. So Marty slows down significantly earlier than everybody, but then he also accelerates much higher out of the corner. You saw him do 1200 equalized watts. Now we're through, one happy family all together. Lit I'm, I, I saw a 92% draft yesterday. That means you only have to do 8% of what the guy in front of you is doing. That's nothing. As the scoreboard is on the screen here, Peter 202, Frank 240, Timothy and I are fighting down there. It's fun to see the update in real time. It's a bit like Speedway, which is quite interesting. Oh, is this where we slide out? Or maybe it's already been there. I really wish I caught where I slide out because my face was like, ooh. <laughs> so, but very concentrated, very focused. Now, 
what's going through my mind at this point in the race is how do we win the race? Because Peter is a threat. Marty is a threat. I mean, these guys, they know how to suffer. And Marty and Peter will beat you. So you have to somehow drop them coming into the finish line. But then Peter gives us all a great gift here. As we're coming into Castro Corner, he's doing 35, 33. He falls down. And then with five kilometers to go, there is no way he's getting back on there. And you can see it again as Victor catches it on the instant replay. He's at 42. He's at 41, 42, 41. Way too quick. He also starts too many lanes out. And he goes down. We're back up here. And now... Oh, there it is. There it was. Wait, wait. How quickly was I going? There, that's what I was looking for. I was looking for me uh, sliding out. So I was doing 50 kilometers an hour. If I had crashed there, oh my God. That would have been emotional. Timothy Tamont goes on the attack. I'm at this point saying to Timothy, Timothy, it's not worth it. You're not going to stay away. We've already done it once. It's really not worth it. This group behind you will catch up. And then I believe somebody britches here. I think somebody, it might be Frank, tries to bridge across to Timothy. And then the entire group comes with it again. Marty, it's, it's interesting to see the many approaches to the Castro corner, how the majority of people wait for the corner and then all slow down together. And then you've got some that move two lanes in. You have some that just overbreak a bit more and stay in the middle. And then you have Marty Pichelny, who just completely slows down. Now, again, keeping the pace, keeping the pace. Uh, it's still very calm and collected. Not much is really happening in this front group. Not much, not much. Three kilometers to go. Everyone is recovering. Equalized heart rates are down. Mine, for some reason, is still really high. But I must have been fatigued at this point. I must have been really tired. My heart couldn't come down. Uh, <laughs> let's go back here. Look at my face. At this point in the race, I was so, so incredibly angry. Because I've made so many mistakes in the night. And I have this. I have songs, and great music, and I'm like singing it out loud. Um, in the zone, but it's really funny the next day after seeing the emotions that Kate bring out of you because I was literally fuming. I was about to blow my head off because I did really well in Hazardous Velo and then the next three races were just nightmare on wheels and I was just so disappointed because I love racing Kate. It's so competitive. It's so rewarding and when good teamwork and strategy play pays off like it did last week, it's amazing, but this week... I mean, well played to Peter, Frank, whoever else was ahead of us on the leaderboard. But oh my goodness, does it get frustrating when things do not go your way. Because it's mixing esports with physical like exercise. And so you have this, uh, the controller is your legs. So in order to do better, you have to work harder. It's not like your fingers start to hurt you, like your thumb is aching. No, it's literally your legs start to burn and your head it gets dizzy and you have to somehow dig deep into Tartarus and find more energy. And now Marty Bikelny, as you can see, tries to go onto the attack. It's it's one lap too early for Marty. By the way, it's a great camera angle from Victor here as he goes on to the back end view. As you can see, Frank trying to chase it down. I'm at 700 equalized as well. Marty attacks. Frank tries to go with it, but then we close it down. It's, it's tough to get a lap up, or at least... I realized that after the first lap that it will come down to the last lap and it will be the toughest lap you've ever had. So now we're coming into it. Everyone is getting nervous. You want to get through this without crashing as we do. I probably, I, I, I risked that for a biscuit a tiny bit. I only just got to 31.7. It was the perfect break. But now I realize everyone's going to attack. Look at me now. So I was spinning it up. I realized this is where the attack is going to happen. So I want to stay near the front. And I want to try and gain momentum into the hill and then come around and be ready. Be ready. Put up the cadence. If somebody attacks, change change two gears and then stand up and put down power. So 1.4 k's to go. We're waiting. It will be Timothy who accelerates at some point. Let's see where he is. 1.3, 1.2, coming around the corner. At this point, Timothy looked over to me and... It is, this is the final lap, right? I think it is. At this point, Timothy looked over. Oh, is there one more lap? That could be one more lap. Yeah, I think there's one more lap. Oops. Uh, so, no, that was not the final lap. <laughs> oh, I'm still... I'm trying to remember this race last night because I was in such a, a hurt locker. Like, my eyes were just going out. Couldn't really see much. Timothy attacks. 
I'm not sure attacking into the cast-up corner is the best approach. I mean, if you want to put on the pressure on everybody else, fair play. But it's so risky. And this is where he attacks. Now it's the final lap. 800 meters to go. Timothy does 1,200 equalized watts. Stands up, puts down the pressure. Marty Pichelny, first to market. I'm third wheel, now second wheel out on course. I didn't want to mark Timothy. I didn't want to bring back the group. But at the same time, if I don't maintain my pace, well, then they're just going to come right around me. So let Timothy do his. I did mine to try and bridge across. Ryan... Ryan is the only one that can follow me, and I should probably apologize to Timothy because in doing this, I mean, Ryan uh, did use a draft of me, then he slingshotted around, then he worked, and you can see the faces, you can see Ryan's face, you can see my face. It is no simple task to do this last 300 meters. You're at your limit, and you're going to have to accelerate. I do think there is a, an alternate dimension where Ryan wins this one. I think if he just does a bit of a sprint here because it's whoever enters Castro corner first that wins. <laughs> I can't get over my I can't get over my face seeing seeing the expression that I had last night. So coming in, Timothy comes around, wins, celebrated, he's happy. Ryan second, me third, Marty fourth, and then Frank, Peter, Nigel, etc. And yeah, that is how not to race CV Arcade. CV Arcade is a great, great platform for racing, but if you want to take one lesson away from me and the Cycling of Boys last night, just don't don't break away. Do your homework, and if you're going to break away, do it like Timothy did it here. <laughs> oh, it is like when you're in K, when you're racing, you don't quite realize what you look like or how deep you're going, so it feels like an out-of-body experience watching yourself back afterwards. But kudos to everyone who raced last night. Tomorrow is another round of the Team League. Hope you enjoyed this little debrief of what happened last night. How you see me on the screen right now, totally dead. I still feel like that watching that today. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.